Reminder systems are commonplace in off-the-shelf calendar solutions. In FileMaker, reminders can be created using the Install on Timer script step. But great care should be taken about how and when this powerful script step is executed or your finely tuned solution could have a blemish on it. Before watching the rest of this video, make sure you're very familiar with variables, scripting, and calculations as this is an advanced technique. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is close the solution and open it back up because there's an open script that runs and sets some global variables. And if we look in the data viewer, we'll see it. We see reminder times. And if we double click on it, we'll see we have two reminders, 380 seconds and 500 seconds from now. Then we have the names of these types of reminders. You see the one in the background right there is represented right inside that variable. And then we have the frames. They're both 30 minutes uh, you know, reminders. You can see it right there, a concatenation of those two values. Now, we could have done a find every time we wanted the reminder to look, but we'd have to search every 10 minutes. The approach here is to search once at the very beginning, load up a bunch of days of reminders. In this case, there's just two for right now. And then you don't have to search anymore. You just have to look at the most recent one and say, OK, I'm going to set the uninstall timer to that amount of time, which in this case is 380 seconds. So hopefully, it should go off during this process. Now, Realize we have a global field right here that says message or slider. There's two different ways you can get these reminders to appear. Now, the slider is a little bit more difficult, but fancier and doesn't interrupt what you're doing. But the message, very straightforward, it pops up on the screen. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We'll go into our startup script. And there's some setup stuff with the, you know, the whole uh, splash screen and stuff like that. But here's where things start right here. Enter find mode, set our event date search to a range of three days. This could have been seven days or two days. Whatever you think works well, we just need to load a bunch of reminders so that we don't have to keep searching the database every 10 minutes or something like that. This way we search it once, find them all, set them up in a return separate list in order, and then you know skim them off the top. Now, what's date search? Because this field right here is our date field, the one we type into. But if we go into Manage Database, we'll see the date search field what it does is it takes things that have reminders. That would be the measurement right here. If it's a day reminder, not a minute or hours, then what you're going to do is take that length of days ahead of time and subtract it from the date so that we know to, to remind you two days or three days before. Now, with the hours and minutes, we don't have to worry about that, so we just result in the date. So this just you know, goes ahead and modifies that date to, to be relevant to what we're searching for and make sure we get the reminders when we want them. In the case of days, we need to make sure that it's one or two or three or seven or however many days we set up before that. So we need to make sure when we're doing that search in our open script, and we'll go back to that, we need to make sure that we find that and load it up. Then we need to also make sure that since we just searched on the dates, we need to omit any events that occurred already today. So we're searching for the current date and then saying time search must be less than the current time or, or omit those ones that are less than the current time. That means they've already happened. We don't want to remind something uh, you know, that happened earlier that morning when somebody loads it up. That wouldn't make sense. Now let's take a look at that time search, it's very similar to our date search in that it goes ahead and converts your minutes into a number of seconds, your hours into a number of seconds, and your days into a number of seconds. Now, the way you figure this out is you go, OK, well, we have uh, 60 seconds in a minute. We have 60 times 60 seconds in an hour, and then 24 times that number in a day. And so that's the way time's figured. So you have to work with it that way. So we're subtracting either minutes, hours, or days from the time to go ahead and figure out when this actually occurred. And that's what we're searching. We don't want to search when it the, the event happens. We want to search when it's supposed to be reminded. If it's supposed to be reminded already, then we're not going to pull it up. So we'll go back in here. We omit those out of there. And then we perform the find. Then we very importantly sort the records because they may not have been entered in creation order in exactly the order you want them to be reminded. We need to sort them by our date search and time search so they're in the right order. 
Then we go to the first record because now we may not be on the first record anymore because we want to make sure we, we you know, go ahead and, and uh, look at the records in order and, and from the beginning. And then what we do is we say if we've actually found some reminders, we're going to load them up into these global variables that we showed at the beginning. And we have reminder times, names, and reminder frames. So there's a lot of ways we could do this. In fact, I really don't need the go to record first here, but if I was looping through and putting these return separate values together, I would need to go to the first record. But actually what I did here in this case, which is going to manage database, is I did something uh, you know that does the same thing as a loop. I didn't want to loop through these records because there might be a lot. I don't know, it was just a it's a it's really a personal preference here on how you do it. But I wanted to go ahead and just grab it from these fields right here. So this list summary feature which you'll see right here is reminder times, reminder frames, and names. We'll just look at one of them, one's list of name. So it takes all those names, and whatever's in the current found set, it makes a return separated list out of them. Then you have the times. Well, it takes the reminder time, which is going to go ahead and be a variation of the calculation we looked at before. But it's going to go ahead and figure out the number of seconds from when we gathered all those values till that reminder occurs. Remember we had those numbers? Up in here, we'll take a look at this. We'll go back to the data viewer here. That's the number of seconds from when we open the solution to when it actually should remind us. So hopefully it should be coming up here soon. Now if we go back in here to manage database, there is one more field here, the reminder frames. Now that's just the frame of when we should do it. So we've got uh, the length, uh, the measurement, and the reminder. So it's 30 minutes or one hour. Just It just puts them together, concatenates them together, and then we get a list of them. So that's what we get inside there. We'll go into our script workspace again. And you can see the reminder. The reminder just popped up. You have an event coming in 30 minutes titled Luncheon with Steven. Let's switch it to the message version so we can get that up and showing again also. So we'll go in here into script workspace. Once we're done, I do another find. This is not really that important. Um, it's just going to go ahead and find all the events that are happening today, not just the ones that need to be reminded. So I thought that might be a nice thing to do, but it's up to you. You know, this is you can take this core functionality of the solution and devise it to work the way that you want to. Once you understand the structure and the basics here, then you can you know make it your own. And then what we do is we run the install on timer script. And that's inside this script right here. And then we do a little thing to make sure you're using FileMaker 13. It's not a big deal here. Not really part of what I'm trying to train here. So let's go right on to a rem reminder install here. And you can see it does a very simple thing. Reminder message, which we'll get to that in a second. Run that script. And the interval we've done is not just specified manually. We specified grab the first value out of the reminder times. That's what get value does, is looks at that return separated list and grab the first value. So that's why it came up in 380 seconds. The next one is, I think it was 560. And here's what it does. It beeps, and then it goes ahead and says, is the reminder type, remember this down here, that global field, is it a message or is it the slider? Now, if it's a message, it simply does the show custom dialog, and you can see how easy that is to do. And there's a simple formula in here that says, OK, let's go ahead and take and put together a message here. It's not very complicated. You have an event coming up in, and then it grabs uh, the event name from that global variable, uh, or I'm sorry, the time frame. So it would be 30 minutes or one hour, whatever it would be. And then the, the actually the, the event name in there and puts it in there as well. It's just a, a simple concatenation. You can put this together however you want. Now, exactly the same formula is used here in this set field, but it's set to a global field. Now, we do that because this is the slider version. So we set it to the X reminder message, and then we go ahead and slide. So what does the slide do? Remember, there's a parameter here, so look at that. So the slider, what it does is simply says go to that object, and also set the layout object animation on so that we can actually see it slide across the screen. It gives us cool little uh, you know, animation effect. Very simple. And I use one here to go ahead and allow me to uh, if we come back here. We have uh, a parameter of reminder. Now, realize that when we come out of here, we can click in and out. So that's running the same script there, different button, because we're going to two different parts of the slider. So let's take a look at that. So if we go ahead and see what we've got here, we've actually got a slider here that's been, you know, the borders and everything has been taken off. And simply we have in there, if you look at it, and we actually have to go ahead and show in here the navigation dots. I've taken those off. And you'll see that we've named these 
If we click on these, there we go. So we can get the name showing up there. And let's see the name here. So we've got a little trouble getting the name to show up here. For some reason, let's see what's happening here. And sometimes when I do this stuff, I'll go ahead and duplicate things so we can get it. Something's probably just getting in the way of me clicking on it. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead. Oh, it's group. That's the problem, I believe. So now I figured it out. So I've got to go ahead and delete that. I'll come in here and ungroup it. And I like to leave these things in my videos because then it teaches you, you know, what if this happens? This is what you need to do. So now I go ahead and click on it. And now we can see this one's named title. And this one's named reminder. And simply, you can see the two different areas here. One's got the title in there. One's got the X reminder message. And the button here runs, if you click on it, reminder slide. And it's got a different parameter, title versus reminder. Very simple stuff, but does take a little bit of extra work. You have to make a global field. And you're going to have to do all this interface. And then you have to do it to every layout. So if you have a list view or some other layout where you want the reminders to appear, you have to have the same thing here as well. And so if you make a change, then you have to go to all these layouts and change it. That's why the show custom dialog is sometimes a lot easier to work with. It's not quite as nice, but it's a lot easier to work with. Now, once you've gone ahead and shown the message, you need to go ahead and remove that first reminder. You don't want to show it again the next time. So what we do is we go ahead and say, OK, value count, reminder times, same thing with the reminder names or reminder alarms. Subtract one from that, and then take the right values from that. That says, take everything but the first value. Now you've got, you've removed, essentially keeping the, the last values, and that removes the first value. It's, it's a little interesting how you approach that. You don't necessarily remove the first value to keep the last values. You, you keep the last values or remove the first one. And then we run the reminder install again. So we come back up here and install the next value that's now at the top of the list. So we now have this install and timer script running when we want it to. Now, the great thing is, is we're not running this every 10 minutes. We're running it only at a specified time that's been searched by and loaded in. And so that means that we actually get this script running the background only when we need it to. That little timer in the background won't interrupt anything. The script is what will actually interrupt something. So we want to make sure we don't interrupt that, you know, what people are doing by running that script. And this and what we're doing here with this message is so simple. It's so quick it won't really interrupt what they're doing. So you've got to remember that, you know, this is pretty nice simple stuff. Uh, but there's a lot that can go wrong here. So you've got to be very careful. For instance, let's talk about how the install on timer runs. What are its specifications? Well, it runs repeatedly. And if you specify, let's say, a, a static number of, of 15 minutes, then it's going to run every 15 minutes the same script. Now, what we're doing here is running it really once every time and having it run for the, you know, going ahead and, and producing that, uh, you're running that script at the specified time that we have inside of our, here, right inside of reminder times. So that's important to, uh, you know, remember the, how that's working. We're not, we're not really running the script all the time. Um, you know, and, and that's, I think, the key to how this uh, is going to run smoothly. Now, what you need to understand is when we install each on timer, it doesn't, it, it will actually replace the previous one. So if we didn't put a new one in, we'd actually run the same timer again for the same amount of seconds, which I think was 380 seconds here. So the new one replaces the old one. You can only have one running at a time. And if you make new windows through the new window feature or you spawn it through a script, it will adopt that timer into the new window. And of course, when you close it, it'll go back to the previous one. It's always going to be running for that, you know, that same file, and you don't have to worry about that. So remember those little details about the install and timer. It can get a little tricky, and it's uh, but it can be very handy. Now, I wouldn't recommend running this install and timer script all the time. You know, it's 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 very good for small little situations, and and maybe this is probably the best situation here, which is you know a reminder system for a calendar solution.